Hey everyone, it's Bradley Bush again with another algebra video. Today we're talking about function transformations. And our to-do list, first off, we'll talk briefly about some of the common functions in algebra. In fact, we'll give you uh, a brief overview of the seven most common functions in algebra because that's where we're starting. That's the starting point for any of our transformation discussions. Then we'll do a brief overview of the transformations themselves. We'll talk about the order in which you should do the transformations, and then we'll do a quick worked example. So I've also listed all of the parts and with timestamps on this video in the video description. So if you want to skip ahead to the worked example or another part of the video, you're more than welcome to. Let's get started. Here are the common graphs in algebra. I have listed a bunch of information below each of them. So for example, uh, the domain, the range, whether the function is constant, increasing or decreasing, and on what interval, and if the function is an even or an odd function. So I won't go over that all of that for each of these, but it's here, so if you want to keep looking at these, maybe pause the video and take a closer look, you're welcome to. I also have another video called Seven Most Common Graphs in Algebra where I talk in length about each of these graphs. So if you want to see that, you're more than welcome to as well. So the first graph is called the constant function. That's just a horizontal line at whatever c is. So if c is 5, it's a horizontal line at y equals 5. The identity function, which is y equals x, or f of x equals x, is a diagonal line. And each of the points on this have identical entries for the x and the y coordinates. So 1, 1, 2, 2, those are all on the list, on, on the line. Negative 1, comma, negative 1, that's on the line. It's called the identity function. We also have the absolute value function, which the right half looks exactly like the identity function, but the left half, which should have been down here, has been made positive, so it's been kicked up top. So that's where you get this V-shaped looking thing. That's the absolute value function. So you have f of x equals the two bars, absolute value of x. Those two bars on the left and right of x just mean absolute value. The quadratic function, which is just a parabola, y equals x squared, or f of x equals x squared. That's the classic parabola-shaped function. We have the square root function, which is y equals square root of x, starts at 0 and goes up and to the right. The cubic function, y equals x cubed, comes up to the right and then goes down to the left. It kind of looks like the quadratic on the right-hand side, here on the right, but it goes up faster than the quadratic or the parabola does. and it has a negative aspect of it because now we're cubing. We can now have negatives. If a negative input goes in, a negative output comes out because that negative has been multiplied by itself three times, which gives us back a negative. So it goes up and goes down faster than the quadratic does or than the parabola does, and it has a negative side to it. Our last function is the cubed root function. So it's kind of like the square root, but we're cubing the root. So this one um, looks kind of like the square root function on the right-hand side. And on the left-hand side, it has something new because the square root doesn't have any left-hand side because it doesn't take negative inputs and does not have negative outputs. So it doesn't have this left side, but the cube root does. So those are the most common, seven most common functions and their graphs in algebra. Let's talk about the transformations. So what we'll do is we'll start with one of those seven graphs and we'll transform it somehow. And these are the transformations we'll use when we transform. So we can, we have vertical shifts, meaning we go up or we go down. And that is by adding or subtracting a constant out to the right or outside of the function. And you just move up or down according to however, whatever C is. If C is five, you go up five units. 
if C is, if you have a negative 5 out there for your C, then you go down 5 units. We also have horizontal shifts. So this is moving left and moving right. Though this left and right movement happens when you add a constant inside of the function and you move in the opposite direction of the sign. So if you have a plus C, you move left C units. If you have a negative C, you move right three units, C units. So we have reflections about the x-axis. If you multiply outside by a negative, then you'll flip it about the x-axis. So it'll flip down or up. If you reflect something about the y-axis, you multiply by a negative inside the function, and that rotates it uh, kind of horizontally around the y-axis. We also have vertical stretches and shrinks. And again, I, I go through all of these in very depth, in detail, uh, in a different video. So if you want to check that out in my algebra play playlist, you're more than welcome to. If you multiply on the, by a constant on the outside of a function, you will vertically stretch or shrink. So you're moving away from the x-axis, which is what you see here, or you're moving towards the x-axis. If, if that constant is bigger than 1, you're moving away from the x-axis. If the constant is in between 0 and 1, then you're moving towards the x-axis. The horizontal sh uh, stretches and shrinks, you multiply by a constant inside the function. If that constant is bigger than 1, then you are shrinking, meaning you're sh pushing towards the y-axis, kind of like a slinky horizontally is getting smaller. And if that constant is between 0 and 1, then you're pushing away from the y-axis. So that's a quick overview on the transformations. The order of transformations is also important. Just like the order of operations PEM does, you can't just do the transformations in any order you want. You have to do them in a specific order. First, you must do the horizontal shifting, then the stretching and shrinking, then the reflecting, and then finally the vertical shifting. If you don't have all of these, then whichever ones you have, you still follow the same order. And our example. So draw the original function along with its transformations and then list all the transformations that you're doing. So we look at this and we think, hmm, what is the original function we have? If we look at the two there, then we can guess we're dealing with a parabola. So y equals x squared is our original function, and we're going to have some transformations that go along here with it. So our first thing that we have to do is we have to deal with the horizontal movement. That's the first thing we're doing. So if we look at this, this positive 3 here says that we move 3 to the left. So if we're going to draw that, let's see if I can copy and paste. What do you guys think? It's iffy. It's questionable but we'll try it. Well, it wasn't too bad, right? There we go. Three to the left. Let's make it purple. And let's get rid of that Y. There we go. Perfect. So we've just moved our, and I'm going to, each time I write something, I'm going to note it right here. I moved three units to the left. That was the first thing we did. The next thing we have to deal with is our stretching and shrinking. So we see that we have a constant multiplied out in front. And that means that we have a vertical stretch by a factor of 4. We need to stretch this purple graph um, by a factor of 4. So we have our, our vertex still there, but we move 1 to the right. Instead of being up 1, we're going to be up 4. So it's going to go through that point and over. It's going to go through these two points. How well I'm going to draw this, I'm not sure because I am not an artist. But we'll give it our best shot, right? Here we go. <laughs> well, it's not perfect, but you get the picture. So. It's being pushed away from x-axis. 
being pushed away four units higher than it should have been. Okay, so we, and then we list our transformation. We stretched it vertically by a factor of four. What's the next thing? The next thing we should be looking for is reflections. Do we see any reflections around here? Um, I do. Multiplying out front by negative, that reflects about the x axis. I have to draw this again. So it's going through these three points. Should we see if I can do this? So it comes down. Not perfect, <clears throat> but okay. So there we reflected it about the x-axis. Now our last thing, and we list what we're doing, right? We have our reflected about the x-axis. So one more thing. We have our vertical shifting. Do we see any vertical shifting going on? And we do. This means that we go down one unit. Here we go. And then we list our transformation. We went down one unit. So we started with the black, which is right here. We started with the parabola, y equals x squared. And then we had four different transformations. We moved the purple, was our first move. We moved three units to the left. Then our blue, light blue, was our second transformation. We stretched vertically by a factor of four. So instead of being <clears throat> right here at negative 2, 1, the point was at negative 2, 4. The third transformation was the orange, which was to be reflected about the x-axis. So it was kind of flipped down and went from the blue to the orange. And the last transformation was the vertical movement down one unit, which is the green. So our green one is our final and our black one was our original. If we ran to Desmos quickly and we graphed this, we would see the same answer that we got. So the black is our original, y equals x squared, and the red is the finished transformed version, which is the negative 4 times quantity x plus 3 squared minus 1. Hopefully this helped. Hopefully it helped you understand function transformations uh, with an example of all four of the possible func function transformations or the groups, four groups that we have. Uh, if it did help, please subscribe to the channel and thanks for watching. Have a great day.